sadly, it, it actually takes courage today to, to say things like what he said. Yeah. Because you will get labeled as a bigot and, and a person who's judging other people and, and that there's something wrong with you. Exactly. And, and, you know, years ago, I mean, I'm old enough where I can remember, uh, you know, as a young little boy, even, you know, in the 1950s, uh, you know, people just, back then, they knew, it, everyone knew it was wrong. Uh, homosexuality was in the closet, no one talked about it, and when I became a little older in the 60s, uh, people, yeah, they talked about... Uh, you know, the queers and the homosexuals and, and, and everyone knew that it was bad and we knew there were a few people out there doing this and no one would condemn you for condemning homosexuality. Now it's a hate crime. Now You just said queer. That's a hate crime. Yeah. That is a very hate That's now very hate. No, that's that's word word now. And, right. and our society is being perverted by these perverts. Right. All right, should we open in prayer? Uh, Heavenly Father, Yahweh, we just uh, pray uh, to thank you for this opportunity to gather together uh, to study your word and kind of brainstorm a topic that um, we don't always like to think about or talk about because it's, uh, it's just one of those things that, uh, that's kind of it's disgusting uh, morally and, uh, and so forth. Anyways, we pray for your help in Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. Mm-hmm. All right, so... Kind of the topic we're going to dig into today is what is wrong with homosexuality. Um, one of the main points I can think of, uh, think off the top of my head is uh, homosexuals can't produce children. They can't have families. That's like the basic structure of this whole plan of God here on this earth for us. All the way back to Genesis where God said, God told uh, Adam and Eve to be fruitful and multiply as well as the other uh, races that were created on the sixth day and uh, so forth. Um, Maybe we could start out reading in um, Romans chapter 1. I'm going to pull this up on Blue Letter Bible and we'll kind of take it from there. Because a lot of people... More and more now, a lot of Christians are starting to think that it's okay to be gay and Christian. And I've got a video clip that we might take a look at later, but I want to look at these verses and, and see if you guys can read anything else into them other than what's said. I'd back it up to 24 even. 24? Yep. Good call. It's kind of uh... Good call. Well, maybe we'll even go back up to 21. Uh, Romans 1 verse 21 says, Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Now, we're going to be talking about homosexuals here in a little bit, so this is important to read these. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. And change the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like unto a corru- made like to corruptible man, and to birds and to four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanliness through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshipped and served the creature more than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. Um, verse 26, for this cause, God gave them up to vile affections for even their, here's, here's really what we're coming here. Um, it's getting specific now for even their women did change the unnatural or change the natural use into that, which is against nature. And likewise, also the men leaving the natural use of the woman burned in lust one toward another men with men working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was meat. Now, I can't help but, when I read this verse here, working that which is unseemly, I mean, I don't want to draw pictures into your guys' minds or anybody else's, but if you walked in on a homosexual couple performing that act, how would that make you feel? I can tell you how, I can tell you how it made unseemly. me feel. 
I didn't walk in on a real person doing it, but I one time I recorded. Um, it was uh, who's that really big guy that um, made all those hit videos on uh, Beck? Uh, he's like a movie producer. Um, uh, Moore. Michael Moore. Michael, Michael Moore. Moore. So I recorded one of his uh, videos, and I can't even remember the title of it because I just wanted to see what he had to say, but I didn't want to rent the video. I didn't want to pay for it. And you know how when you record, sometimes you set your recorder to record two or three minutes into the next program? And right as I was getting done watching that program, I was hearing, uh, it was actually, I had the, the video playing, and I walked out of the room, and I started hearing sounds that didn't sound right, like grunting sounds. And, uh, <laughs> and so I came in the room, and it, it was right after that Michael Moore video, there were two guys doing the unseemly act here. I mean, this, I mean, I felt... On TV. Yeah, or... on TV. It was a movie, it was a gay movie or homosexual movie or, movie or whatever, but it just, it, it made me feel just disgust, uh, violated even seeing that. And I think that I can relate to this working that which is unseemly. It's just, I mean, it, it's disgusting. I, I got a video clip of um, uh, Phil Robertson talking about that. Maybe we'll dig into that later. But what do you, anybody have any thoughts? Well, I, I think many people uh, today are, are really disgusted and feel much like what you're saying, uh, especially in states where they have approved gay marriage because we know, you know, deep within our heart that that is just totally wrong. And, and a Christian person knows if they study the Bible uh, that God does not want us to be doing those kinds of things and that it is an abomination to him. Right. And um, so now we have our, our leaders uh, and, uh, and judges uh, promoting homosexuality in, right. in our country and, and it's become uh, very widespread. Well, you know, the question, and this is going on in a lot of our churches today, they're saying that these verses, we're, we're misinterpreting these verses. And, and um, there are churches that are not only accepting homosexuals into their congregations openly. I mean, it's okay if we accept somebody who's struggling and wanting to repent, but they're actually even ordaining uh, pastors and ministers, uh, homosexual pastors and ministers, mm -hmm. um, as overseers of their flock. And that, re that kind of reminds me of uh, what you're saying here is of the, uh, the tornado that uh, came about in, in uh, downtown Minneapolis. Uh, it was just a few years back now, but they were holding a conference on uh, homosexuality being accepted in their church. And uh, a tornado came out of nowhere and tipped over the steeple on uh, their big church in downtown Minneapolis and uh, didn't really do much other damaged did, uh, anything else. They were in the convention center down mm -hmm. there and it took part of the yeah. roof of that off too. Right. Oh, and did it? it? Yep. Did, okay, and, and it uh, blew their tents away and their tables yeah. that were set up outside and, and also, but it, the main thing was that it hit that steeple. It knocked the cross right off of the... Yep. Yeah, it tipped it right over. over. Yeah. And that was think a, that would be a message, you know. Yeah, yeah. Th and that was like a big regional conference meeting for the e yes. uh, yes. ELCA, right, of the Lutherans, the big branch yep. of yeah. the... So when you say that you felt violated, I, I feel, I get furious with this because I feel like this is an agenda being pushed on us. Right. And uh, it seemed like it was something we had to be tolerant of and then now we have to accept it and now we almost have to assimilate into it. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I, I heard about the uh, Burger King Proud Whopper and yeah. uh, all that, I looked into that and a number of companies in major companies in this country are totally behind this gay movement. Mm -hmm. uh, McDonald's, Burger King, Home Depot, Starbucks, they're all behind this. And in, in fact, Starbucks even said, you know, if you have a problem with this uh, and you're Christian or something, you can sell your shares and go buy shares in another company. That's how, uh, how they belittle Christians. It's like today. in your face. So, yep. yep, it's in, in your face. face. I'm getting a little tired of it. And I thought it was important to talk about it. Right, I, I pulled it up on Google here. A gay hamburger, Burger King selling the proud Whopper to celebrate sin, and there's the wrapping for it. I, I don't understand what. Why would it? Is this? Is there? Are there more? 
disgusting gay connotations, homosexual connotations, calling it a, a big whopper. Um, I, <laughs> I this is I, I could say something. The but generation we're living it. in, it is so. Uh, I mean, this, this kind of stuff is just so out of bounds and so raunchy and disgusting. Well, they are totally behind that movement, right? As well as is McDonald's as well, and for anyone who just doesn't want to go by it, and, and you know, and it, it's it's a difficult uh, topic uh, because so many of us have uh, family members that. Uh, uh, are either related to or are homosexuals, and right. uh, um, and, and it, it's it's very sad to see when your own family members who are not homosexual uh, will support uh, homosexuality mm -hmm. and accuse you of being a bigot because you speak out against it and and you take the side of. Uh, uh, of purity and and uh, the Bible and and, uh, and you because you know that it's wrong and they don't and and I I think uh, you know pointing out these verses where it, it, God says that uh, you know it's an abomination you know to for a man to lie with a man or for a woman to lie with a woman um, you know who loves that homosexual more yeah uh, or that lesbian more. The, the person that points out what God has to say about it so that that person has the chance of even knowing what they're doing is wrong right. and, and that they may repent or, or the person who supports them in their sin and, and really is putting them on a path to hell. That's, you're exactly right. That's, mm -hmm. What you're saying is, oh, I'm so proud of you. Keep walking down that path to hell. Yeah. I, where as we are saying, stop, don't do it, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, and it, obviously, homosexuality isn't the only sin. It's just this is the topic that we're talking about today. Right, and and we don't hate the person; uh, we hate the sin. Right, and we, and we you know and if homosexual wants to repent, that's great. All sinners should. But mm -hmm. the problem we have is that, um, and people say, well, you shouldn't judge uh, a person uh, for being gay because you're a sinner too. But the difference is is we are admitting our sin and, and saying it's not okay and we're repenting for it. These homosexuals that tell us we can't vote or, or we can't uh, judge them or other Christians that say we can't judge homosexuals, uh, they're missing the boat. We're, we're not judging them to hell. We're just saying that that's wrong. And, um, well, I, I, think, I think that you know our job here, we're not here to win friends with people. We're here to serve God. Right. And uh, if they're doing something wrong, and you don't see many people doing this in media these days, but you need to speak boldly about it to give them an option or an opportunity to have salvation. And if we don't at least do that at a minimum, what good are we exactly. as Christians? So Right. You know, we were talking about how um, making the stance that we make against homosexuality and how that uh, the world will look down upon you and think you're a bigot like like uh, my dad was saying um i'm gonna play a video clip of the duck dynasty star phil robertson uh, i know this is kind of old news but the um all this the spirit behind it is still re relevant i mean it, it's it's happening over and over again i'm gonna play it here patriarch of the robertson family is raising eyebrows with his comments on homosexuality it seems like to me a vagina would be more desirable than a man's anus, Phil Robertson told the magazine. Start with homosexual behavior and just morph out from there. Bestiality, sleeping around with this woman and that woman and those men, it's not right. Annie needs to come out very strongly and condemn Phil Robertson's statements. Wilson Cruz and other gay rights advocates are hitting back hard, citing growing acceptance of same-sex marriage and relationships to suggest Robertson is ignorant, bigoted, or both. The world is changing. The I'm going to rewind that for a second. You see the flags back there? Um, married with pride. And there's one back here. It's a, I think it says Catholics for homosexual marriage. Hard. Citing growing Catholics acceptance of same-sex marriage. And a Christian cross on it up there. <clears throat> that, that's the danger is when it works into the pulpit and Christians. Are Relationships to suggest Robertson is ignorant, bigoted, or both. The world is changing, the country's changing, and even the state in which Mr. Robertson lives is changing. 
and he needs to get in line. Ah. It makes you wonder. You see he that? Needs to get Patriarch of the that world. is the theme. That is what they're going to. That's why we're talking about this today. Is the the world is trying to make us get assimilate. in line, assimilate? That's exactly what I was getting at. And you see the look on his face. That I mean, that's homosexuality. And I've said this for many years. It's it's not a loving movement. It always ends up being militant. And the what, reason I say that is because every time you read about it in the Bible, homosexuality has lead to, has led to militants. Um, Sodom and Gomorrah. When the men circled the house, wanted to rape the, the two angels, two male angels. Um, in Judges 19, verses uh, 16 through 24. Um, same thing. Same thing. Well, we could probably... Um, That'd be a good segue into let's, the scriptures. Let's, let's go read those scriptures. Um, let's go to Judges 19. Or, or maybe we should go to Genesis 19. I guess they're both the same. Let's go to Genesis 19. And I'll just begin reading while you guys are getting there. I'm going to start at verse 1. And there came two angels to Sodom at even. And Lot sat in the gate of Sodom, and Lot, seeing them, rose up to meet them. And he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. And he said, Behold now, my lords, turn in, I pray you, into your servant's house, and tarry all night, and wash your feet, and you shall rise up early and go on your ways." And they said, nay, but we will abide in the street all night. Because these angels were uh, probably going to test the people here. And he pressed upon them greatly, and they turned in unto him. In other words, Lot said, no, please, please, come on in. It's not safe out there. And entered into his house, and they made them a feast, and did bake unleavened bread, and they did eat. But before they lay down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, compassed the house round, both old and young, and all the people from every quarter. This is what we're looking for. This, that guy's face that we just saw on there, this, I equate him to this same mentality of the people of Sodom. Yep. He's looking, he's saying, he's saying that Phil Robertson, the world's changing around him, his state's changing, he better get with it. You know, This is going to happen to us, and it's, it's right here. And, Lot, and they call unto Lot, and said unto him, Where are the men which came into thee this night? Bring them out unto us that we may know them. Now, obviously, we know what this means here. To know them means they wanted to sexually abuse them. They wanted to, um, okay, work that which is unseemly. And Lot went out at the door unto them and shut the door after them. Um, and then it goes on. Maybe I'll scroll down. We won't read the whole thing. Well, I would go into that. He had even offered them his two yeah. daughters. Okay. Right okay, I'll read that. I'll read that. Verse 7, And said, I pray you, brethren, do not so wickedly. Behold now, I have two daughters which have not known man. Let me, I pray you, bring them out unto you. Let me pray you, I'll bring them out unto you. And you do unto them as is good in your eyes. Only unto these men do nothing. For therefore came they under the shadow of my roof. And they said, Stand back. And they said again, this one fellow came into sojourn, and he needs to be a judge. This is what the Sodomites are saying. They were talking about Lot being a judge. Yeah, they're saying, who, who is Lot to uh, be judge over us? Now will we deal worse with thee than with them? You see the militants here? Better get in line, Lot. And they pressed sore upon the man, even Lot, and came near to break the door. But the men put forth their hand and pulled Lot into the house of them and shut the door of the angels here. And they smote the men that were at the door of the house with blindness, both small and great, so that they wearied themselves to find the door. They still, after they were smote with blindness, yeah. still wanted to go in and rape those. Well, I don't know if they knew they were angels. I don't think they did, obviously. They just thought they were good-looking men. Well, even when you're smote with blindness and you're still, I mean, there's got to be something come over you to be able to, or to have that much lust in you for men. And so it's, the whole thing's kind of... Right, this, this homosexual movement is breaking in to our schools. They're forcing it on our children. Um, so I, I don't buy that argument that, well, they're just, what do you care? They're just too peaceful loving people who want to have a family themselves and 
adopt kids and raise a family and and sh and and show lots of love. That it just doesn't work like that. And, and you know, one thing that's that's pretty obvious here that uh, not most Christians know, but I'm sure some don't, and that is the uh, the word sodomy or or sodomite uh, is talking about the homosexual act. Uh, let's just say it like it is. It, it's the homosexual act of a man uh, inserting his penis into his partner's anus. That's that word sodomy comes from this Bible <coughs> scripture telling us about homosexuals in the city of Sodom and, and Gomorrah, uh, right. and that's where that word comes from. Just so everyone knows. Yeah, that's Good exactly. Point. And the early laws in America when they were made. Um, they had laws against sodomy, mm -hmm. and and it, the the definition of sodomy is exactly what you said it was. Um, I know, I know, it's hard to even say it, but but people, you know, they support gay, uh, you know, uh, pride and all this other stuff, even if they're they're not homosexuals, and they just overlook that that point. But if that comes to the fore point and and where you you realize what they're doing. To each other, it's not right, and we know it. You know, people know deep inside it's not right, but they just, they don't want to hear that part of it. Uh, they just want to think about love and you know, uh, do your own thing. You know, whatever you want to do. Do you guys want to hear Bill O'Reilly's response to um, Phil Robertson's ordeal? Sure. Check this out. With GQ magazine, the leader of the Klan, Phil Robertson, has been suspended by the A&E cable network for anti-gay comments. He told GQ, quote, start with homosexual behavior and just morph out from there. Bestiality, sleeping around with this woman and that woman and those men, unquote. Problem with Mr. Robinson is that it seems he is being judgmental. Although he said he's not judging, he went on to opine that various sinners, including gay people, will not, quote, inherit the kingdom of heaven. If he had simply said that he objects to homosexuality on religious grounds, A&E would not have been able to suspend him. But once a verdict on behavior is introduced by a public figure, watch out. Luke 6.37 says, judge not and you will not be judged. Condemn not and you will not be condemned. Can you believe that? I, yeah, just, I just dislike uh, uh, O'Reilly more now than I used to. I <laughs> It's, I don't. That, I don't like to make says, it. says, "Judge, lest you be judged." And I don't. Yeah, I don't we like. We are to judge character. Yes, right. And we're supposed to keep our character clean, so it can be judged. And and right. we're supposed to use God's word as as our Bible, as our our uh, you know uh, way of knowing what's right and wrong. And, and that's Satan's uh, number one trick at dealing with homosexuality is that uh, we're not to judge them. And here Bill O'Reilly spouts off the same words just like the serpent did in the Garden of Eden, you know. Yeah, and he does that in ignorance. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, I actually uh, posted a comment on the, uh, Burger, the YouTube thing for the Proud Whopper and made a comment similar to what Don had mentioned about this act. Right. And someone had commented, who no doubt he was gay, commented about uh, how come you guys always basically make this about sex? And obviously, I, it is about sex. I have relationships with men and women. But when it comes down to that, it's totally about sex. So other than that, I don't know how you can make a comment like that. Right. So. right. Um, back to the uh, Christians being deceived, like with um, Bill O'Reilly. We're not supposed to judge him. And uh, other Christians say that um, they can live loving relationships too. I'm going to play a little clip here from this gay Christian network, supposedly, and um, we'll see what you guys think about this. If it's true, then why is there so much controversy? The controversy comes about because in a few places, the Bible does mention instances of sinful homosexual acts. And many Christians believe, as a result, that the Bible condemns all homosexual behavior in all contexts. So I'm going to stop him for a second. This guy, what he's trying to say is that homosexuality is okay. The Bible only condemns um, certain, types, certain of types of homosexual behavior if it's, yeah. if it's forced upon others. But if it's, if it's two um, you know, willing partners, 
then it's okay. I, I think Romans uh, one twenty seven was pretty specific. Oh yeah, it went straight to the point. Well, I'm gonna we'll come Leviticus back to this twenty. Right, I'm gonna turn there. Verse, verse thirteen. I'm gonna pull that up and uh, I'm gonna pull Leviticus yeah, verse thirteen. And we'll come back to the rest of this guy's video in a second here. Leviticus eighteen is one of them. Twenty two. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna see if you can interpret this any different. All right. Leviticus 18, scroll down here. All right. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is an abomination. Now, here's the next. I'm going to read this next that verse. That doesn't leave any room for, oh, is it a monogamous relationship? Right. Uh, or, or is it a committed relationship? doesn't leave any room for that. It's an abomination. Right. And here's the next the next step we're going to see, well, we won't get into this, but the next step I really believe we're going to see is not, not I mean, homosexuals will, it's just going to be accepted, and it already pretty much is, but it's going to move from there into bestiality, just like Phil Robertson was saying, it's going to morph out from there. He's absolutely right. I guarantee it, because otherwise it wouldn't be in the Bible telling us not to yeah, do right, that. In the very next verse. Yeah, next yep. verse. Neither shalt thou lie with any beast, to defile thyself therewith. Neither shall any woman stand before a beast to lie down there unto. It is confusion. Now I'm gonna actually I'll read this. Defile not ye yourselves in any of these things, for in all these the nations are defiled which I cast out before you. So you go to the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Presites, mm -hmm. all those nations they were God was so disgusted with them for what? Verse twenty two. Mankind lying with mankind. Womankind lying with womankind. And then what does he and say? And bestiality, too. And bestiality. Yeah. So the reason why we're talking about these sins and why they're important is because homosexuality seems to be one of the sins that really touches God's anger off. I'm going to go to verse 25 here. And the, land, and the land is defiled. He's saying it even defiles the land. What do we have? What, what happens as a result of homosexuality oftentimes? AIDS? all kinds of other diseases. It's mm -hmm. the land. And unfortunately, there are people who aren't even homosexuals who yeah. are hurt by the homosexual acts uh, creating mm -hmm. this disease of, of AIDS. Right. And, you know, sometimes uh, hemophiliacs right. who have needed uh, blood transfusions and take blood products have been, uh, you know, uh, you know, diseased by AIDS and died, and they weren't even homosexuals. Because of the acts Be of because others. Because of what the homosexuals did. And, and the homosexuals, let's face it, they are very promiscuous, most of them, mm -hmm. and it spreads fast, Right. Uh, the disease with the homosexuals. Right, yeah, absolutely right. I'm going to read the rest of this verse. Therefore I do visit the iniquity thereof upon it. Just like we were talking about the case up here in St. Paul, God came with a tornado, ripped off Minneapolis, the, in Minneapolis, yeah. yeah, ripped off the top of that church steeple and blew mm -hmm. down the tents. Yep. God says He will come and visit this iniquity, mm -hmm. and the land itself vomiteth out her inhabitants. So th what God is saying, this is so disgusting that even the earth throws up. And that's why I mentioned in the beginning, uh, what I, I did, you know, I brought up that graphic case of what I had heard in the other room when I had the TV going still of two guys grunting. It made me feel like I wanted to vomit. It's just, it's, yep. It is it's so disgusting. Yet didn't the Lutheran church, even after that happened to them, not take that as a uh, an omen or a sign Sign's from God? Right. And passed. they went ahead and, and yeah did their vote on it, anyways, and, and passed it anyway. Defiant. And, uh, you, yeah. When you mentioned the land and so forth, there recently there was, uh, in the course, they make it sound like everyone's bigoted if you have a problem, but... In Africa, I don't know what country it was, but they have laws that they were they put people to death for sodomy. And it's because you look at what's coming out of there, the amount of AIDS that's going just blowing through that country, and these people are dying. This is why they're doing it. It's not to be bigoted or anything. It's because they're trying to follow some sort of natural course of law. So, just my take. Good point. Now that <laughs> you mentioned the death penalty, um, I believe in Leviticus 20, verse 13... And ancient Israel, according to God's law, in order to keep their nation uh, holy and pure from disease, sickness, and 
immoral, uh, moral depravity. Um, here it is. Leviticus chapter 20, verse thing, uh, 13. If a man also lie with mankind as he lieth with a woman. Okay, does this say rape? Does this say, like this guy in this video was saying, and I'm going to let him finish his, uh, his, his nonsense, his lies. This is just the act. doesn't matter if it's a so-called loving relationship. that they, it's, it's not a loving relationship. It's only a lustful relationship. And the thing is about homosexuality, it's, at its core, it is in defiance of God. Because God's his whole plan again structures around the relationship of a man and a woman and a family, and it builds from there. You have the tribes of Israel. Everything's family orientated. Even the the relationship between Christ and the church is symbolic of a man and a woman, not a man and a man. That you know there there are no in um, godly instances of same sex marriages. Um, but here it goes. I'll finish this verse. As he lieth with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. That's how serious God takes this uh, crime. Obviously, we know he destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah because of it. I'm going to play this guy's, uh, the rest of this gay network video here. This is actually really dividing the church today. And even gay Christians are divided on this issue. So there are basically two positions. We'll call them side A and side B. Christians on side A believe that the Bible has been mistranslated and misunderstood on this issue. They believe that where the Bible appears to condemn homosexuality, actually it's condemning other practices like child abuse, rape, or idolatry. And that if we go back to the original text and understand the context, we will see that these passages don't apply to modern, monogamous, loving, committed, Christian, same-sex couples. That nice is spin. a bold-faced lie. We <laughs> yeah. just read it. We just yep. read it, yeah. Do not Verse listen to 13. this guy. This guy is lying to you. Right. Because he's obviously a homosexual trying to push his agenda so that he can justify his ungodly acts. You know, if there's someone who is uh, kind of questioning this and they're kind of sitting on the fence and they're not sure how God's going to think of their lustful desire, they need to really, like, put this guy out of their mind. They can't right. follow this. This guy's lying to you. Stick to yeah. this word. This word is going to keep you and, straight. And, and, you know, he's, he's, on. he's not the norm. You know, you, you do have some gays that uh, become pastors and some gays that are Christians, but... Overall, I found that uh, most of the gays I've ever come into contact with are very much either atheists or agnostic mm -hmm. because they don't like being convicted by the scriptures like what we just read. Right. This character on here, uh, he just denies that it was ever said and he ignores it, right? Right. Well, uh, he's trying to reason uh, this into his way of life instead right, of to justify what he does. Right, instead of changing our and this is to yeah. follow how God would have. He, he, he and people like him are the most dangerous in Christianity because they're they're people. A lot of people that don't read the, and study the Bible that go to church, they'll hear that and they'll say, "Oh, well, the Bible doesn't say right, anything right. against a loving homosexual he, relationship." He's bearing false witness. Yeah. Right. he is very much bearing false witness. I'm going to, uh, for fun here, play a little clip of uh, Phil Robertson talking about homosexuality. Uh, I, I don't know. You guys, have you guys watched Duck Dynasty ever? Yeah. It's a Christian family that, Love you know, it. they have a little entertainment, but they close in prayer yeah. at Love the end of prayer. each show. And it, it, it's, it's a pretty decent show. Uh, pretty decent family here. I'm going to play this here. Is homosexual behavior a sin? The guy asked me. I said, do you not know that the wicked will not inherit the kingdom of God? Don't be deceived. Neither the sex are immoral. Nor the idolaters, nor adulterers, nor male prostitutes, nor homosexual offenders, nor thieves, nor greedy, nor drunkards, nor slanderers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. I gave him the rest of the story. Man, I like that. I, like I that like that kind of. That's what we need in our <laughs> in our churches. Need bold speaking truth. Right. We need more of that. Yeah, and and sadly, it it actually takes courage today 
to, to say things like what he said. Yeah. Because you will get labeled as a bigot and, and a person who's judging other people and, and that there's something wrong with you. Exactly. And, right. and, you know, years ago, I mean, I'm old enough where I can remember, uh, you know, as a young little boy, even, you know, in the 1950s, uh, it, you know, people just, back then, they knew, it, it, everyone knew it was wrong. Uh, homosexuality was in the closet, no one talked about it, and when I became a little older in the 60s, uh, people, yeah, they talked about uh, you know, the queers and the homosexuals, and, and, and everyone knew that it was bad, and we knew there were a few people out there doing this, and no one would condemn you for condemning homosexuality. Now it's a hate crime. Now you just said queer. That's a hate crime. Yeah. That is a very hit. That's now, very hateful. That's an acceptable word now. And, right. and our society is being perverted by these perverts. Right. So I'm going to read this verse here from Revelation 22. It says, uh, it's talking about New Jerusalem, who gets to come in and so forth. It says, Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without our dogs and sorcerers, and whoremongers, and murderers, and idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. Here's that guy that just, I'm, I'm going to judge that guy right now. I'm going to judge what he said. I'm not going to judge him to hell, but he lied. That mm -hmm. guy that runs the Gay Christian Network, um, he loved, he, he, that was a bold-faced lie. But anyways, let's talk about this word dogs. Does anybody know? What, what verse was that? Revelation 22, verse 15. I got an idea what that means. Yeah, it, that that's the homosexual act. Right. Uh, yep. Is when when you say someone uh, you know is a dog like uh, Goliath uh, was disgusted when they sent David out, this young little boy, you know, out uh, to fight him. He says, "Well, what are you doing? You're sending out dogs, uh, you know, to fight me." It was like an insult, and and that's what it meant—a homosexual. Yeah. Well, that's where they get the term "doggy style." Doggy style is yeah, you know, yeah. Well, because Marcus, the, you wanted to say something because or? homosexuals. Uh, Don actually said it already. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> homosexuals, they you out well, here. <laughs> they do it. Uh, they like they do it like dogs do it. Yeah. Um. I'm going to uh, read. Uh, was it Deuteronomy 23, verse 17 and 18? I think this has the word dogs in there. I'm going to read it. Um, there shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel, nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel. Thou shalt not bring the hire of a whore or the price of a dog. That's a male prostitute. Male prostitute, yep. right. Uh, into the house of the Lord thy God for any vow, for even both of these are an abomination unto the Lord thy God. Now what we're doing today and what this gay Christian network is doing, they're bringing uh, homosexuality into the church. God says, I don't want any of that stuff. Don't bring... In the hire of a whore, the price, more specifically, God is talking about he doesn't want money raised for the church um, through prostitution. But you can apply this in, on different levels as well. And, and, you know, it's interesting, you know, when, when uh, you know, here we are embracing the, you know, as a nation, I should say we aren't, but the, the nation in general is, is starting to embrace homosexuality as being normal and all these states uh, approving gay marriage, uh, you know, God's not too happy with that. And there's, there's punishments for that, like, you know, what is said in uh, Deuteronomy and, and Leviticus. Um, but, and as we look back in history, even a natural consequence of perverting a society is that that society will fall. And, uh, you know, the great empires of the world uh, almost all of them fell because of promiscuity, homosexuality, uh, and uh, what a lot of people might not like to hear, race mixing, mm -hmm. you know, has destroyed, uh, you know, most of the old empires. Right. But homosexuality was a big part of it, and it happened in Greece, it happened in Rome, um, and, it, and it was one of the factors that perverted that society and made it fall. Exactly. And, you know, a lot of these... What we're reading about here is why God commanded Israel not to do this stuff is because the nations before them, the Canaanites and other nations around the world, they had sacred prostitutes. They had men, or, uh, women prostitutes as well as men, but 
So people would go into this temple, they would have sex with either a man and a man, or a woman and a woman, or a man and a woman, regardless of what it was, and they would raise money for their false gods. Um, and that's how a lot of these false religions um, were structured. I see us going back to that. I mean, we talk, we read about Mystery Babylon in Revelation 18. I think, in a sense, we may literally see um, us going back to some of that. I mean, when you watch, if you go to YouTube and you watch any kind of video related to documentaries related to homosex, homosexuals um, prowling the streets and stuff like that, I mean, it is, it is just really raunchy stuff. Um, their, their whole movement is called pride. Oh, yeah. You could do a whole study just on pride and what the Bible says about pride. Like in Proverbs 8, it talks about pride and it talks about the things that God mm -hmm. hates. Their whole movement nowadays is behind that word pride. Gay pride. Gay pride. Just the last week, they had here in Minneapolis, they had their pride parade and their whole movement the whole city comes in they and, and wasn't the mayor of uh, minneapolis the grand marshal of the Something gay pride like march yeah he uh <laughs> he actually in another point um on top of that he made one of the bridges in minneapolis colored like a rainbow for the whole time mm -hmm. they were doing this and rainbow is obviously another symbol that god gave us as a promise right. that they overtook which is a christian symbol obviously and overtook as though it's their own symbol now but pride, like in Proverbs 8, um, I was just looking at it because I flipped there because I want to see what it said. In verse 13, it says, The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogancy in the evil way, and the forward mouth do I hate. Wow. And even, like we've already talked about, is it right or is it wrong? What does God say about it? He says it's an abomination. An abomination is something to be abhorred. It means mm -hmm. God hates it. Yeah, pride, pride was Satan's. A downfall Absolutely. as well. So great point. I, I wanted to just bring up a, a point here. In going back in Isaiah, we and we covered this uh, recently at another study. But uh, Isaiah chapter three, probably if you want to pick it up at about verse eight. But this is really kind of reminiscent what what Jerusalem was doing back then and what's going on in our uh, country or our society right now. And I, like I said, I'd pick it up with verse eight there if you want. Verse eight, okay. And, but let's talk about each one, eight and nine. I'll, I'll do that. I'm going to mention one more thing on Mark's thing about the rainbow. What That's really got to upset God because yeah. th that rainbow is a covenant, was used as a covenant of mercy. Right. They're yeah. shoving it in God's face saying, this is our symbol. And, and it, oh, it just, you couldn't get any more rebellious than that. Um, okay, so let's go to Isaiah 3 verse 8. For Jerusalem is ruined and Judah is fallen because their, t because their tongue and their doing doings are against the Lord to provoke the eyes of his glory. Provoking him, like that rainbow. Mm -hmm. The show of their countenance doth witness against them, and they declare their sin as Sodom. They hide it not. Woe unto their soul, for they have rewarded evil unto themselves. Man, that's, that's it exactly. says it right there. They, I mean, they do it just blatantly. They don't hide anything about it. And if you say anything against it, you're a bigot, you're a homophobe or whatever. Where is that uh, verse where, I think it's is it Isaiah 1, where it talks about woe unto those that call evil good and good evil? Isaiah 1 uh, had some verse 9 there as well, but I don't know if that's what you're looking for. Probably around that area, though. Oh, yeah, okay, so I'm going to read this here since we're talking about Sodom and Gomorrah. Isaiah 1 verse 9 says, Except the Lord of hosts had left us a very small remnant, we should have been as Sodom and we should have been like unto Gomorrah. In other words... Who are the remnant? Right. Those that keep the commandments of God. Bingo. And it, it's, it's people like us, like what we're doing right now. We're saying this is wrong. Yep. And we're holding the line and we're not too popular for and, it. And I think, I think it's, uh, it's coming close to the point where we may not be the majority anymore uh, in our stand against homosexuality. So many people are uh, going over to the other side and saying, oh, we think that they should be able to be married. Like here in, in Minnesota, they pa passed uh, uh, the uh, law about gays being married, uh, passed in a public uh, uh, vote, majority vote. 
It's unbelievable. You know, it's, and then, because it's been promoted as, as something that is an acceptable alternative. Yeah. And it's promoted in public schools that way. Mm -hmm. You can't right. say anything about it. Your kid can't say anything about it. He'll be yeah. suspended or expelled or whatever. Right. Well, but Ben can, said it before, too. It's hate speech. Canada has hate yeah. speech yeah. laws. Pretty soon they're going to say, well, you can't, we're going to have to erase that out of the Bible because that's hate speech. Well, you oh, know, we're we not allowed to talk or you're going to go We have a jail. thing in this country called mm -hmm. the Constitution and Absolutely. the freedom of speech. Okay. And maybe Canada doesn't have that, but we, we need to hold to that. Absolutely. Even though that's another issue, but that is the First Amendment. We have the right to say these things without being persecuted. It wouldn't surprise me if five, ten years from now, this video that we are recording right now gets banned from YouTube. Right. It wouldn't surprise me. I wouldn't give it that long. It might not even be that long, <laughs> right. yeah. Five or ten years. Yeah, now, like I was saying we'll before, be... it actually takes courage say we're these hateful. days to speak out against homosexuality, where yeah. 50 years ago or 60 years ago or whatever, um, you would it would take courage to speak out uh, for homosexuality. Right. The fact is you that know? we are speaking out because everyone has a right to hear the truth and be a partaker of salvation. And that's it. And so we're not afraid to at least say what, what this word says. Yeah. No matter how much pressure Someone's we're Someone's gotta get, do it, right? and I guess we're elected, right? To do the uh -huh. dirty job of, of saying the truth about homosexuality and that it is an abomination. Well, I think about that guy in that video that you showed a little while ago, the, the gay Christian guy. Right. One, he's trying to eliminate all the different places where it talks about the laws against homosexuality in the Bible. He's trying to rewrite that. But the other part is, we know that Christ said, if you love me, then keep my commandments. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we just pointed out a number of different places what the commandment was on homosexuality. Right. right. So yeah. how, if you're going to be a Good follower point. of Christ, and Christ says, if you love me, then keep my commandments, mm -hmm. he's going in direct opposition to what yes. Christ's commandments are. Right. Not only that, in Matthew 5, it says that if anybody, um, where it talks about uh, one jot or one tittle shall not be changed from the law, it says if any should go and teach others to go against that, that they'll be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. So, which, which he's doing. Yeah, right. so. yeah they yeah. support the perversion. I'm going to bring up uh, a thought here. Uh, some people say, well... Even people that may hold the same values that we do, they say, well, but we're in America. Um, who cares what they do in their bedroom or whatever? Um, that's more of a libertarian stance. As libertarians today say that uh, let's just let them do what they want to do and it's okay. What are you guys' thoughts about that? Well, I, I think that kind of stems from, uh, from the 1960s uh, uh, with the, uh, the hippie movement and the... Uh, there was a song, I can't remember the name of it, it, it might have even been, It's Your Thing, Do What You Want to Do, I right. Can't Tell You Who to Sock It To. Right. You've probably heard it on the You radio. see, that's the tempting thing is a lot of Christian conservatives, they don't want the government controlling them in all these other areas of their life, so they kind of side with the libertarian view, but a libertarian that says, let them do what they want to do and don't make any laws against homosexuality mm -hmm. and stuff like that, that's still a violation of God's law. And that's what we're more concerned about. Right. With whatever government we're living in, we are supposed to promote God's law mm -hmm. in our society. Yeah. Not free, just do whatever you want. Everybody should have freedom. It doesn't work like that. Then, then you end up with anarchy. Right, right. Anybody got anything else to say? I think we're running about down. I did. When time. you were, uh, one last thing here, you were talking about, uh, I don't know which uh, Lutheran church it was, ELCA e or whatever, ELCA. But, uh, down in Minneapolis. Okay, so I... Did a little looking into uh, the word Sodom. You can search it on this site. And uh, Jeremiah 23 came up, and God speaking specifically about prophets and uh, yeah. likening them to Sodom and Gomorrah. And I think it pick it up around verse 14 in Jeremiah 23. I thought it was pretty interesting. Worth 23, up. verse 14. Okay. I have seen also in the prophets of Jerusalem an horrible thing. They commit adultery and walk in lies. They strengthen also the hands of evildoers, that none doth return from his wickedness. 
They are all of them unto me as Sodom and the inhabitants thereof as Gomorrah. Therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts concerning the prophets, Behold, I will feed them with wormwood and make them drink the water of gall. Like, that's interesting that that's one of the, prophet, or one of the uh, trumpets in Revelation, wormwood. For from the prophets of Jerusalem is profaneness gone forth into all the land. Is it, how far do you want me to go? Was that? No, that's pretty much it. Yeah. He's comparing them to what's going on in Sodom and Gomorrah. And I, obviously, in today's day and age, we have this brought into the churches now. Right. And, so and when, these prophets are, are they're teachers, right? Right. And, and you could you you could also compare the uh, the Catholic priests uh, to being teachers or prophets, right? And um, and it's no secret that the Catholic Church has been infested with homosexuality. There is a culture of homosexuality amongst the priests. And, uh, you know, everyone knows it. People, especially Catholics, may not like to hear that. Mm -hmm. But there have been hundreds and hundreds of priests and bishops uh, who have been guilty of... Uh, uh, molesting young children uh, and uh, and carrying on uh, the lifestyle of homosexuals. Okay, um, well, we better wrap this up. Um, Heavenly Father, Yahweh, we just want to thank you for your word. Uh, thank you for your truth. We pray that um, you can help us make a strong stance um, for your laws, for your word, regardless of the persecution we re that we receive. And um, we just want to tell you we love you in Yeshua's name. Amen. Amen. Christian Overcomers is brought to you by the tithes and offerings of our listeners. If you'd like to donate, you can do so by going to ChristianOvercomers.com. God bless you, and thank you for your support.